What are the ethical issues concerning germline gene editing? So I think first we need to define what germline gene editing is. So for me, I would define it as altering an individual's genome in such a way that this change is passed on to future generations. And this has been made possible by scientific advances like CRISPR-Cas9, for example. We also need to think about whether this gene editing is permanent, which cells we're editing, are we editing a specific group of cells or all of the cells in the body? Now, there would be some advantages to this, for example, um, preventing severe disease. There was a case in China a few years ago where a scientist edit the, edited the genomes of two, um, twin, two twins um, to prevent HIV infection. And if we could do this for a lot more people, this would prevent really severe and you know, fatal disease. And also if we did gene editing in crops, for example, this could be used to help um, kind of famine in developing countries and also to make sure that people get the nutrients that they require. However, we also need to think about the unknown health effects of gene editing, particularly in humans, in embryos, as all of these changes are going to be passed down to the offspring that did not necessarily consent to having those genetic changes. And also if you think about crops, we don't know the effects on human health. And there's also the kind of autonomy aspect, thinking about do people know um, if the food that they are eating has been edited um, and also the potential effects on the environment with editing plants and affecting biodiversity. So I think overall, there's quite a lot of issues concerning um, gene editing. And I think before it's kind of implemented on a widespread scale, we need to know more about the long-term effects um, and how it can potentially introduce inequality. Hi, I'm Arisma, a second year medic at King's, and I'm going to be talking to you about genome editing today. So genome editing essentially refers to technology used to alter an organism's DNA. And there are lots of ways to do this, but the most popular one right now is CRISPR-Cas9. And this essentially works as a set of molecular scissors and molecular glue where you can chop off certain chunks of DNA and we're hoping to be able to edit, this, edit these genes and insert new genes back in. So a really popular case study in the world of genome editing is the Lulu and Nana case in which they edited the CCR5 gene of these two children, Lulu and Nana. The CCR5 gene essentially in its mutated form um, results in HIV resistance. So these children have this edited and mutated version of the CCR5 gene. However, they're very young at the moment, around two or three. And so we don't actually know if this has been effective. Moreover, we aren't very sure about the long-term effects of genome editing at the moment. Of course, genome editing has tremendous potential in reducing the incidence of diseases, especially monogenic and completely inherited diseases, where snipping off a particular gene on a particular chromosome may result in you not inheriting that disease. However, at the moment, we don't know what the long-term effects of genome editing are. And is it necessarily ethical to test that out on real human beings, real children like Lulu and Nana without knowing the long-term effects of genome editing? Now, looking at the four pillars of medical ethics, of course, we have beneficence and how there's tremendous potential of eradicating certain genetic diseases by implementing technologies such as CRISPR-Cas9. Looking at non-maleficence, is it unethical of us to prevent the implementation of CRISPR-Cas9 and other such genome editing technologies, even though we know that it may have some potential benefit in terms of eradication of a certain genetic disease at the individual level? On the other hand, are we intentionally causing harm to someone by recommending a treatment such as genomic editing, even though we don't know what its long-term impacts might be? Is it ethical for us to prescribe something or recommend a treatment, even though it's not been fully researched, especially regarding its long-term consequences? And looking at justice, we have to look at the wider implications of genome editing. While it does have potential in terms of preventing certain genetic diseases, it can also lead to the issue of designer babies, which is when do we stop genetic editing? Do we just stop at editing our genes that cause diseases? 
And what diseases would we stop at? Would we then start editing physical features of children to create the most ideal child possible? And this would just increase social injustices that already exist in our society. And this is often the issue with things that are this powerful. While it does have the potential to do tremendous good, it also has the potential to do tremendous bad. Um, and where do we find that balance? Who will be the people regulating this? And how will we ensure that genomic editing isn't used for harm and isn't used to create this optimal archetype of human beings that would result in even more social injustices. So these are just some ethical issues that you might want to think about when answering questions about genomic editing. We hope this video has been useful. See you in the next one. Our one-to-one -one online interview tutor with offers a tailor-made service personalised to your specific universities and medicine interviews, including MMI, Panel and Oxbridge. Our expert tutors will enable you to articulate yourself practice mock interview questions, as well as receive extensive feedback on your performance. You will also gain access to our online interview course with over 150 tutorials and over 200 exemplar answers.